Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna to be checking out a very budget friendly 3D printer from Elegoo called the Neptune 2. So let's get started. So as a disclaimer, Elegu actually sent me over this 3D printer, but in my defense, they still have yet to email me. I don't know if they want me to review it. I don't know what they want me to do with it. I don't know when the launch date is, which apparently it's already launched. And I've been sitting on this for about two, three weeks, basically in my front doorstep because I really didn't know what I needed to do with it at this time. So technically, I actually didn't even need to review this at all because they still haven't contacted me. But the other day I was watching a movie with my family in the living room and I decided to give this a try. I unboxed it, put it together. Sorry, I don't have any footage of it, but pretty straightforward putting this thing together. It took me about half an hour and I think it only has about like 20 screws. It's, it's like assembly kit. So the entire base was already assembled. All you had to do was put this arm in, this arm, the top, and uh, this beam that goes across. Very easy. They have very detailed instructions on how to do it. So it's really... I wouldn't get lost doing it at all. One thing I do recommend if you are putting it together is that keep the screws over here and the bottom for these two poles loose as everything comes together and then tighten them later because these have a tendency to kind of like twist so the fitment might not be perfect. I had to actually go back and loosen it to play around with it then tighten it back up to get everything perfect. As far as the price on this guy, it is $160. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I had the lowest expectancy on this. My bar was like on the bottom. As soon as I saw this guy and I was like, okay, it's $160, it's a budget printer. It's not gonna be that great. The stepper motors are tiny. It might make a lot of noise. Like I had the lowest bar set for this. Before I even uh, touched it, played around with it, or put it together. I just saw it and I was like, okay, that's what my expectancy is. And man, am I wrong. First off, this is $160 for this entire setup for our build volume of 220 by 220 by 250, which is a pretty decent size compared to my first 3D printer that I got, which was 200 by 200. It's built on an all aluminum frame. There are some plastic pieces on here, like say this little extruder head. Nope, this is aluminum, sorry. Uh, this plastic piece, yeah. This plastic piece to level the bed. Uh, it does not have auto leveling, so you do have to use those knobs, but it is very standard, like you use the paper to level it, and I had no problems doing that. You also get a semi-flexible build plate that is held down by four of these clips, which makes it a little bit easier to take off the prints. I do prefer this type over the magnet types that other 3D printers have due to the fact that this could go up on higher temperatures, which you could easily reach up to 100C and still be able to print ABS and stuff like that. It does come with a 32-bit motherboard and the interface that you get with this guy is actually very, very clean. I like this touchscreen that they have compared to the normal standard that you're used to with the Marlin firmware. So they have their own little filament loader and everything up on the touchscreen, easy to press, very visible. I like using this little thing. And especially for like a beginner, it does help a lot. One thing that I was completely wrong about that I was saying earlier, which was the stepper motors. These are using the TCM's 2225s, which are really tiny, but it's silent. Like I can't hear this printer print. Other than the fan being blown on the power supply, this thing is quiet. I can't hear it move left or right. It just, it, it doesn't feel like it's doing anything and I have to check on it from time to time just to make sure it's actually still moving. And I love that about this printer. So it does come with a little bit of equipment where you get clippers, uh, an SD card, an SD card reader, the manual itself, the printer, but no filament or anything. So it does come with like little basic stuff here and there. Now, as far as the SD card, it does come with like a little print sample, which I didn't even do, but it does have other subfolders in there for the manual and also Cura. Now in their Cura version, it actually has the profile for this printer. Now, all my computers already have Cura installed and I didn't want to reinstall just their version. So I copied the config files, put it into my Cura and I'm using their profile slicer settings. I did not change or anything. I did not tune anything on this printer. I just wanted to see 
right off the bat how well it would run with their settings. So the first thing I did print was this little red top. Okay, this little piece on the top over here, which is more like a square. It's got some overhangs and it's made for this vise. So I decided to put it together and see how it would come out with this guy. And it came out flawlessly. I mean, you could see some indications of the lines not being super straight on certain layer heights. Other than that, it actually came out really, really great. Unfortunately, when I put this together, I just left the base settings. So the infill was about 15%, which I should have changed to like either 50 or something even higher if I am planning to use this as a vise. Otherwise, it came out on the first print really nice. So the next thing I did was hook up OctoPrint to it with the time-lapse settings. And I also decided to print something up really tall just to see if it has any stringing over, or overhangs or any other issues that I might run into if I am printing larger and multiple materials. And to my surprise, nothing. It was such a clean build with the default settings, like no tuning whatsoever. And it came out really nice, as you can see from the time lapse itself. Now I put this together and I didn't have to sand anything down. Everything was super smooth and it works perfectly. I, this vise just works great. Again, I should have changed the infill settings. That's why it's kind of like hollowish, I could see. But other than that, that came out good. So I decided to change the filament, use something else and 3D print this little guy, which is, if you've seen my other channel, which is Pandemic Playgrounds, I play Space Engineers. This is a small grid battery that you find in the game. And I found a way to actually export the 3D models. And I took that 3D model and put it into a STL file so I could slice it and print it. And this is the result of it. Now this is actually a battery holder. So I could actually put AA batteries in here, which makes it look really, really cool. And it comes with the lid. I mean, eventually I might want to tune it up and kind of make it into a battery bank because this looks really cool for a battery bank itself. Everything I threw at it was really good. I didn't find any issues with wobbling. Other than finding that little Z height difference, which I think I caused because when I was installing this thing, I kind of put a nick to the wheel and it's causing the, a little bump to the that certain Z height. So I'm gonna look into that and sand it down and make sure that that's not the problem, but otherwise everything came out immaculate. So ultimately, in my opinion, this is a really, really good printer. I actually highly recommend this for $160. You can't really go wrong. It's 220 by 220, which is a pretty decent build volume compared to like the Ender 3s. It's got a heated build plate, which you're not using any magnets, so you can actually go to high temperatures. And best of all, it's silent. Like I could keep this in the next room and I won't be able to hear it at all because the motors are that quiet. Now I will leave a link to this printer down in the description below and I know as soon as they launched it was basically sold out instantly. So keep an eye out for this printer and, and check on it periodically so you might be able to find it reposted later on on Amazon or something like that. Well that's it for me guys and if you guys like this video please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this that I missed Leave it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.